There are over 700 teams in FIFA 23, but only one can rule the entire planet. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FIFA 23 Global Imperialism. I've spent the last week designing an entire global map of FIFA teams for imperialism. We've got literally every nation in the game broken up with their respective maps with the goal for one of them to control the entirety of the world. This wheel is actually cooked. We're gonna spin, who's the first nation? This is gonna crash my computer. I genuinely can't even make out what team is coming up right now, but the first team for global imperialism is going to be St. Pat's. Which way will St. Pat's be spinning? It's gonna be Northeast. So as we head to the map of Ireland, you can see St. Pat's here. We're gonna pull out the wheel. They're gonna be taking on this team here. St. Pat's trying to invade Shelbourne for the first game of the global imperialism. It is going to be St. Pat's emerging as winners, meaning the first man changing clubs in this video is going to be Barrett heading to St. Pat's. Bang, goodbye to Shelbourne. Next team up to face the challenge is going to be I think they're Polish. My apologies, they're Romanian. Kravoya are going to be heading east, which means it's going to be a bit of a Kroiva derby here. Is it going to be 1948 or is it going to be the university emerging as winners here in our first Romanian clash? It is going to be the challengers. They have taken over and imperialized, meaning Jay Barzu is out of the club. Also making a new rule for this global imperialism video. If you defeat a team, not only do you get the best player like always, you always take any other player that they have picked up along the way. So for right now, they only get the best player, but let's say down the line, you beat a team and they've taken five other players from five other clubs. They're all going to come to you because when you imperialize a place, you kind of get the best of them. Also lads with the maps, if I've made any small errors, I apologize in advance, but understand I spent a week trying to make these maps. They're all made by me on Photoshop. So yeah, I'm probably gonna make out of 700 teams, one or two mistakes. Believe it or not, I'm not a geography nerd for every part of the world. Also, you may see as we come to the global imperialism map, there are some teams already that have claimed full nations. That is because like Helsinki are the only Finnish team in the game. So they're automatically gonna claim Finland. And this is the only Hungarian team in the game. This is the only team from Cyprus. This is the only team from the UAE. Real Oviedo, a team that I technically kind of own. I paid 10 euros to own a, a share of their club. So I got a personal dog in this fight. The Spanish side are going to be heading east. As we jump to our Spanish map here, I believe that's Sporting Gijon. It's a Spanish second division clash. Sporting Gijon trying to defend home turf against Real Oviedo. The winner for this game is going to be Real Oviedo. I think that's all three away teams winning. And that is a huge pickup for Real Oviedo, a 76 rated defender. And don't think I'm only doing like second division clubs in the Spanish map. Nah, they could be versing Barcelona, Real Madrid, all those teams. Honestly though, if you are a team like Real Oviedo, you wanna be getting scalps like this under your belt nice and early. I am letting you guys know as well that this will be a seven part series. I'm gonna be doing 100 teams eliminated every episode, uploading it every second day. So make sure you are subscribed with notifications on if you don't want to miss an episode. 100 teams every time until there is one left standing. We're heading to the Scottish league here. It's Aberdeen. And this is the direction they're going to be heading. And as we pull out the good old directional wheel, that means that Aberdeen are going to get the first upgrade of this global imperialism video. Go ahead and give them that area there. Congratulations, Aberdeen, a historic moment. We're going to be bumping up their goalkeeper, Gorta, from a 71 to a 73. I want someone really big to pop up here or someone really random, maybe an A-League club. We get Harrogate Town. That's not an A-League club. And just like Aberdeen, Harrogate are heading northwest. Staying on our UK map here, it's going to be Harrogate taking on Middlesbrough. A League 2 side trying to knock off a championship team. Let's see how this goes. This could be the first big upset of this global imperialism video, but it's not going to come to fruition. No point doing the wheel for this. It's not going to matter for Middlesbrough. So I'm just going to give them Matic. Sorry, Harrogate. You've been invaded. No fairy tale story for you today. Oh, this is going to be a big... Big one lads, Ajax, one of the biggest teams, if not the biggest in the Netherlands. So Ajax are gonna be heading north, meaning they're gonna be trying to conquer Volendam. I'm telling ya, if Volendam can knock off a big team like Ajax, they could set themselves up for success in this imperialism challenge, but it's not gonna be Dusan Tadic 
gets Ajax the win in the 86th minute, sending the center midfielder eating to Amsterdam. Also, if some of you are wondering why I've got like a red line here around the edge of the country, but not like this side of it, that's because it's so I can tell myself where the ocean is, like where the sea is. And so another nation obviously backs onto here, but this is the ocean, so they can't travel that way. I made myself a rule that you can only travel by, to another country by land until you've overtaken either the whole nation or the whole continent. I've got to say that rule does give like a massive advantage to nations like from teams like the South African teams. If they beat, if like there's three teams in South Africa, if one of these teams can claim South Africa, they're basically going to be getting upgrades all the way up through Africa and yeah, they're gonna have it all to themselves. I mean, even if like one of the Saudi Arabian teams or if this team from the UAE can get a win across, like it could be interesting. LDU Quito, we're heading to Ecuador. Quito are going to be heading Southeast. The direction that arrow is heading is gonna see them facing this team here. You Catalica, Caslica. And because FIFA's FIFA and they're both Ecuadorian teams in the South American Champions League, we're gonna have to watch this one. I can't put them into a tournament, which makes no sense to me, but it is what it is. Let's see who can get the win here. Hernandero laying that one off there. What a finish at the near post and it's Quito with the lead. Or can they get back in it here late in this one? Martinez makes it one all in the 81st minute. Surely not, surely not. Martinez, oh my God. Oh my God, this dude is a hero. He's made it 2-1 in the space of a couple of minutes. And there we go, lads. Catalica come back from behind in extraordinary fashion to eliminate Quito. So there we go, Aguilmera is the highest rated Quito player. It's different because of the licensing, I can't transfer these players the way I normally would, but I'll make sure it's right behind the scenes. Headed to Austria, Rapid Vienne. And Rapid Vienne will be heading Southeast, which means they're, oh, are they getting an upgrade or are they taking on the other team from Vienne? I think I've got to say it's an upgrade. It's like on the line, but it carries through and doesn't touch purple, meaning they now have a large chunk of Austria, meaning their striker Berg Stoller is gonna be going from a 72 to a 74. Okay, we've got some German football here now, Mainz. Mainz will be heading directly north. <laughs> Shit, they got like three teams north of them, but if I'm being honest to myself, directly north is gonna be v Victoria Cologne. Like directly north of the center point of the logo is Cologne, Victoria Cologne. It's the third division side trying to defend home turf against the Bundesliga outfit who's gonna emerge victorious it is going to be mines in the 89th minute oh my congrats mines you got yourself an 80 or see they wish an 87 and a 67 rated center half heading back to england it's lincoln city i feel like they kind of flew under the radar in our uk imperialism video but they're going to be heading directly north so it's going to be lincoln city taking on grimsby town it's the league one outfit trying to overtake the league two outfit who is going to be the winner in this match it's going to be off to a second leg second leg here here we go, Lincoln versus Grimsby. It's another draw. Leg three, Grimsby Town back at home defending her home turf once again. And they do just that. It's a big upset as Grimsby Town punch up and take out a league one opposition. Go on Grimsby, you're getting a 67 rated center defensive midfielder. That is huge. It's Helsinki. Nah, this could get so interesting because they've already conquered a nation. I'm pretty sure if Helsinki head east, they take all of Russia. They're gonna be heading though, they're gonna be heading southwest, which they can't do because they can't go into the sea until they've conquered their continent. Oh, is that gonna be Russia for them? I've pulled out the symbol and that means they are gonna be moving into Russia. Nah, this is about to be crazy because Helsinki are gonna take all of the Russian Federation. Oh my God. Oh my God. Helsinki. Technically, they own a lot of the world right now. But that brings me to a point that I didn't think I'd have to be making in this video. What happens when you claim a country and what happens when you claim a continent? So for country, I'm gonna make a rule. So if it's a country that didn't have teams in it like Russia right now, then it is just the standard plus two upgrade. But if you claim a country that has had a lot of teams in it or any teams in it, then you get a plus four upgrade to your best player. And if you claim a continent, Every player in your starting 11 gets a plus one upgrade. So Helsinki beginning their push to claim all of Asia 
and maybe all of Europe. So that now means the midfielder Hetimaj is from 68 to a 70. Tranmere Rovers step on up. The club from Merseyside is going to be heading south. Well, it's like southeast, but regardless, in fact, if it's southeast, yeah, then it means they're going to be taking on Stockport County. Stockport versus Tranmere, a battle of the league two sides. Who is going to continue their journey in this imperialism quest? We have to wait another game to find out. Game two, here we go. Come on. What's it going to be? It's a 3-1 win for Tranmere. They invade Stockport successfully. And that means Phil Bardsley is going to be heading to Tranmere. That's huge. Staying in the UK, heading up to Scotland though, it's time for Livingston. And Livingston are going to be heading southeast, meaning it's going to be an upgrade for them. Well done. Starting to make their push potentially into England. Three players here on Livingston that are 66 rated. Which one of them is going to be going up to a 68? It is going to be the striker, Anderson. BK Hacken. We're heading to Sweden and they're going to be heading northeast. Sweden is so compressed around the bottom of the table or bottom of the country. Like literally there's so much room up for grabs at the top, but they're going to be taking on Elfsborg. Elfsborg. It's our first exposure with Sweden in this episode, in this video. It's Elfsborg trying to defend against Hacken. Will Hacken conquer them? No, they weren't. Elfsborg defends homeland and takes over Hacken. Are you trying to tell me there's two midfielders that play for the same club that both have the same name? S. Gustafsson, Samuel Gustafsson, and Simon. Okay, I was going to say. Regardless though, it will be Rygaard heading to Elfsborg. I feel like we keep heading to England every second spin, but Leighton Orient are up. And Orient will be heading west. So we're into London for the first time. Leighton Orient will be taking on Arsenal. And again, a friendly reminder, don't get butthurt if I haven't put the teams in the exact positions. I know that Tottenham don't own all of this part of London, but... It's just to keep things simple, you know? Respectfully, if you're getting butthurt over the exact placement of a geography with every map in the world, go touch some grass. Come on, Leighton Orient. Do it for all of us. Please cause the upset of the century. Leighton Orient sends it to a second leg. Arsenal brought it back from a 2-0 deficit as well, which is wild. Second leg. It's... Oh my god! Charlie Kelman! No, Charlie Kelman, dude, literally, like I've spoken, this guy's a rebuild hall of famer. We follow each other on Instagram. Charlie Kelman has eliminated Arsenal. Oh my God, that is massive. Absolutely massive. I did not see that coming. Let's go. Party and Erdegaard, both 85 rated. Who will be heading to Leighton Orient? It is going to be Thomas Party. GG's Leighton Orient. Okay, we're heading to Japan. Kawasaki Frontal. The only team they can face is Kashiwa, so we're going to be facing them regardless. No, the J League's not in FIFA 23. I was going mad. I was like, where is the J League? They took it out alongside Mexico. How have I not realized this? Damn UEA. Oh, I've wasted so much time building this J-League map. I guess I now have to make it all white. I just made things a lot easier for all of the Asian teams. It made it a bit easier for the A-League and the K-League teams. I swear I've sold players to the J-League though in career mode. Well, Japan is now completely up for grabs. A big Premier League team here. A big name up for grabs, Leicester City. Leicester City will be heading east. The arrow is out. It says this way, which is basically in between east and southeast. Is it, is it, is it, uh. So it's basically in the middle here, which is gonna lead just to an upgrade for Leicester, only by the skin of their teeth, which means James Madison is gonna find himself upgraded to an 86. Heading to Belgium here, it's Anderlecht. Anderlecht are heading north, which means they're gonna be taking on OHL. It was either that or if they head south, they'll take it on St. Gallen, but they were surrounded. Anderlecht would have have to be one of the favorites to emerge out of Belgium, but will they live up to their expectations? Taking on Leuven here, OH Leuven, and they are eliminated. Anderlecht, a huge elimination for Belgium. And that is a huge scalp for Ho OHL. They get Jan Vertonghen. Wow. St. Gallen are basically surrounded now. They have to go through o OHL. Uh, the, the, the trend continues. Swansea City are up. Swansea are definitely getting an upgrade here, but it just depends which direction they're going to be getting the upgrade. They're going to be heading west. I'm just going to claim that as west and give them this 
area right here. If you saw our UK imperialism video, then you probably already know who's getting upgraded, but it is going to be the man himself, Piro, going up to a 75. Staying in England. I mean, there is the, they, they do have the country with the most teams in them, but Watford. Watford's heading west, almost northwest. Definitely needing the arrow out for this one. A very contentious decision. I would say that's in between North and Northwest, so they're gonna be taking on MK Dons. I saw a few people not too happy with the slander that I leveled MK Dons way, but you know what? The best way to counter my slander is get results on the park. Will that happen? Will MK Dons survive? Maybe, for now they will. Second leg away at Vicarage Road. Watford versus MK Dons, and it is Watford eliminating MK Dons. It doesn't matter who I give to Watford because it's a 67 rated centre back regardless, so I'm gonna give them O'Hara. We're gonna be heading back to Romania, FC Botosani. FC Botosani are going to be heading South East, no, Southwest. You guys can't blame me for being directionally challenged. I am Australian after all. I live upside down, but that's gonna be an upgrade. Well, it was gonna be an upgrade regardless, but they're gonna be heading further into Romania. They should be kind of upset though, because if they went North, like they could have eased, they could have got into the Ukraine or into Moldova. So it would be their 66 rated right midfielder, Golovsa getting upgraded to a 68. Al Shabab heading to Saudi Arabia. Al Shabab heading Northwest. Oh Jesus, this is gonna be contentious. Get the arrow out, lads. I think it's gotta be Aif Al Fasai because they don't share a board with Al Raid. So I think it's gonna be like just because this little corner here. Alpha Sai. Well, I'm in an awkward position because Alpha Sai are no longer in the rest of world or Saudi Arabian section. When I was planning out this video, I looked online and it said they were. Should have clearly looked on the game. So I'm gonna delete them from here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these three teams into a random wheel to see who's gonna verse this team here, Al Shabab. All right. Al Reed, Al Hazim, or Al Tawun. I told you guys there'd be a little hiccups in these experiments. I am doing it with 700 videos, but, or 700 players, rather, teams rather, but it's Al Tawun. So here we go, lads. Al, Al Tawun versus Al Shabab. Who is gonna get the first win? in Saudi Arabia. It is gonna be Al Shabab hanging on and overtaken. And there we go, Kaku is the player leaving. 77 rated headed to Al Shabab. That means this whole area here is gonna to go to Al Shabab. FC Porto, okay, one of the biggest clubs in Portugal. And for Porto, they're gonna be heading Southwest, which means they're gonna be taking on this team here. Although you could make an argument for Boa Vista. When in doubt, get the arrow out. So it's like just above, it's probably in line with this arrow here. So we're gonna go down, oh God. It's like hitting the border of all of them. So if we're gonna continue going straight through, yeah, it is gonna, whoop, it is gonna be this club here. All right, it's gonna be Aruka defending against FC Porto. This one would be massive if Aruka can pull off the upset, which they do not. It's FC Porto with the 3-1 win. Probably not gonna make too much of a difference here to FC Porto, but it's gonna be the center half, Basso, heading to Porto. Porto might have set themselves up nicely here because now they've kind of gone south and they've got all of this area here to gain upgrades in. All right, heading back to Sweden, I believe it is, Silkborg. My apologies, they're actually from Denmark. Silkborg are heading directly south, which means they're gonna be taking on Horsens. So here we go, the first game in Denmark for this global imperialism video. Who is going to survive? It is going to be Horsens, absolutely thumping Silkborg despite getting dominated in the statistics. So it's gonna be Jorgensen heading here to Horsens. Sparta Rotterdam, we're heading to the Netherlands. They're heading directly south. I think I know what this one is. Yep, they're having a Rotterdam derby, not against Feyenoord, but against Excelsior. The battle is on here to claim part of the city of Rotterdam, a city I visited last year on my road to the World Cup. If you've seen that video, shout out to you. But here we go, Excelsior versus Sparta Rotterdam, and it is Sparta emerging as the winners in this one. Nothing wild here for Sparta Rotterdam, but they're gonna get themselves a new left midfielder. Who is up to bat? It is going to be Elche. I think they're Spanish. I love how we're just jumping from one like country to the other. It's going bing, bing, bing all around the world. Elche will be heading like Southwest. Basically West, meaning they're gonna be facing Cartagena. A first division versus second division battle here. Elche trying to take their League 2 opposition down and they are going to do just that 
quite comfortably. And the wheel has told me that it is going to be De Blasi heading to Sadiz, not Etiki. Okay, we are headed back to England. We are going to have Northampton. And Northampton will be heading northeast. Meaning if we follow the line, they're going to be taking on Peterborough United. Peterborough defending against the attacking Northampton. Who will survive and who will be imperialized? It is going to be Peterborough taking down Northampton. And then we go 67 rated Hoskins is going to be headed to Peterborough. I want an A-League team to come up for God's sakes. I want someone, I want a repeat team to come up as well. But no, we're heading to Germany, Dinamo Dresden. So Dresden are either going to be getting an upgrade or taking on Leipzig. I know which one they would rather. It's going to be an upgrade. Good stuff, Dresden, good stuff. I mean, they could have also made their way into Poland, I think it is to the east, but they're going to be heading north and getting themselves an upgrade. Their lowest rated or their highest Highest rate of player, I should say, is their keeper, Brawl, who now goes up from a 69 to a 71. We're heading to North America for the first time, heading to the MLS and Canada. It's the Vancouver Whitecaps. They're going to be heading further north, which is going to be an upgrade for the Vancouver Whitecaps, claiming more land in Canada. Also, I want to point out how beautiful my map of the North Americas is, especially Mexico, because after designing Mexico... I found out Mexico is not in the game this year. Not like this was one of the hardest ones to do or anything. I'm gonna leave it here purely for aesthetic reasons, but just know that if I land on a Mexican area, it's an upgrade, not a game. So their biggest upgrade, they're gonna have Ryan Gould, I believe it is. I don't know if any of you guys remember him, former FIFA 13, I wanna say it was, Wonder Kid. He's going to be going up to a 78. Okay, we're heading back to Portugal. And they are also heading directly north. Which means, just like the Vancouver Whitecaps means, they're going to be getting themselves an upgrade. They couldn't head west, but if they went east, they would have been at the bottom of Spain. Upgrades galore happening recently, but it's going to be their defensive midfielder, Maurizio. Maurizio, my legs! But Maurizio is going to be going from a 73 to a 75. I'm ready for a game. Who's it going to be? It is going to be Coventry City. Coventry will be heading south. East. I don't even need to get the arrow out for this one. It's going to be another upgrade. There's not many areas in England where you can get an upgrade, but Coventry have found it. And it's going to be the striker, Gyorkerez. Gyorkerez got the real game face. He's going up to a 76. That's literally four upgrades in a row. This video is going to go for 10 hours if we don't start getting some eliminations in this episode. All right, heading back to Belgium. It's a big one. Standard Liège. Standard Liège are heading southeast, meaning they're going to be taking on Serang, RSC Serang, the first matchup in a hot minute, but who is going to survive? RSC Serang or Standard Liège, the scoreline is a 2-1 win for Standard Liège. And it's going to be the centre forward, Bernier, headed here to Standard Liège. Liège continuing their little path down here. Like, there's a bit of space if they continue getting drawn. Okay, back to the MLS, FC Dallas. I think Dallas are able to move into Mexican land, but it's not. They're going to be heading north. And north for FC Dallas is still an upgrade. They're going to be near sporting Kansas City, but getting all of this area to themselves. It was between... Jesus Ferreira or Alan Velasco, but the wheel has decided that Jesus Ferreira is going to be going from a 75 to a 77. If this guy gets a fair few upgrades in a row, he could be deadly in this video. Heading to South America once again, though, it is going to be Boca Juniors, and they're going to be heading northwest. There's just so many teams here in Buenos Aires in Argentina, but northwest is going to be, is that Independiente, I think they are? Well, if we're going from the logo again, you could say it's this team here, but let's be real. I've, had, I've got this, like if any city gets an exemption, it's Buenos Aires because every club is a grid. So if we're just saying the box, it's straight up there. This game is massive though, ladies and gentlemen. A battle for Buenos Aires. Boca Juniors versus Independiente, who is going to emerge victorious. It is going to be Boca Juniors in what might be the most high-scoring game of the video so far. So it's going to be the defensive midfielder, Marcone Marson, heading here to Boca. No, not to Central Cordoba, to Boca. Okay, heading back to Germany, it's Heidenheim. Heidenheim will be heading southeast. Oh God, Heidenheim, are they versing Bayern Munich or Stuttgart? Oh, I think they've just been lucky there. They're going to be taking on Stuttgart. Heidenheim getting bold here, a Liga, second division team trying to take over a Bundesliga top flight club. Who's going to emerge 
victorious, it's gonna be Stuttgart by the skin of their teeth. And it will be Klein Deinst heading here to Stuttgart. I feel like Belgium has been one of the most obscure nations that we've visited the most in this video. It's St. Truden. And Truden will be heading directly north. I could be telling a fib, but isn't this the team that uh, Kevin Musket managed? Regardless, they're gonna be taking on Gank, a big challenge. Really hoping Truden can bring it off here. I'm really hoping they can get the result. I've got a solve, I mean, Kevin Musket, polarizing figure in Australian football. I met him though after the A-League Grand Final when Melbourne Victory beat the Newcastle Jets up in Newcastle in like 2018, 19, I want to say. And it was about six o'clock in the morning. I somehow snuck myself into the Melbourne Victory post-team function celebration. Was up there drinking with the players, met like the CEO, and I fist bumped Kevin Musket when he had the A-League trophy around his neck at like six o'clock in the morning. A random but core cool memory. Regardless though, who's going to get the result here? It is going to be Gank absolutely destroying them. It was nice seeing you, St. Truden. A four-way tie, but the wheel has decided that Bauer, the center half, is going to gank. I think we're heading to France for the first time, Valenciennes. And they're gonna be heading southwest, which is going to be Armiens. Armiens versus this team. And by this team, I mean Valenciennes. <laughs> it's an all French second division matchup here. Who is gonna survive and who's gonna be imperialized? It is gonna be going to a second leg, thanks to Kakuta. All right, second leg here, Valenciennes are the home team and the victory is going to Valencians. They successfully challenge. And that is a huge scalp for a League 2 side. Armians, like, they don't have anybody good, but the fact that they're gonna now lose a 76 rated player to Valencians is a huge upgrade for them. But Valencians have now made themselves potentially open to PSG. I think we're heading back to Belgium again. Charleroi are gonna be heading south. Every time I think of Charleroi, I just think of Kid Leroy, but for the first time in today's video, they are the bottom of their border and they back on to the top of France. So I think it, that little section there is Lens. So they can be versing any of these teams here, but if we're following the wheel, it went just slightly, like my hands the opposite way, but like, just a little bit further west of south. And if their logo is there, it's probably gonna be whoever is at the tip here, which I think is Star de Rems, if I'm being honest. I think it's Star de Rems, Star de Rems. We're about to have our first border crossing, ladies and gentlemen. Either Star de Rems are gonna be entering Belgium or Charleroi is gonna be entering France. Let's find out the answer. It is gonna be Star de Rems beginning their ascent into France, or should I say, into Belgium. <laughs> and in the process, they're gonna be donating Morioka into Stade de Rems' side. This is gonna look sick though, because Stade de Rems, they keep this territory, but as we move over to Belgium, they're gonna have all of Charleroi's territory. And I'm gonna chuck their logo in there as well, just so we can tell that it's their area. I mean, realistically, if they get like a Northwest or something, they beat Ghent and then they get another win and head further north. They might continue just pushing into like the Netherlands. That's mad. But we're gonna be staying in France. It is Auxerre. Couldn't tell you off the top of my head where Auxerre is, but they're gonna be heading north, slightly northwest if it matters, which means they're gonna be taking on Paris FC. This is kind of a tricky one because both these teams are gonna be in the firing line. Like the winner's gonna be in the firing line of PSG regardless. So yeah, this will be interesting. Paris FC versus Auxerre. It is going to be Paris FC, the second division team from France upsetting the league one outfit. Paris FC trying to escape PSG's clutches. And something tells me Paris FC are not gonna be saying no to Zadeka, 74 rated player. Oh, okay, we're heading to China. Dalian Pro heading to the Chinese Super League and they're gonna be heading Southwest. I think this team here is called Habai. I was wondering when we were gonna have our first Chinese introduction, but I think it's Dalian Pro taking on Habai. It's one star Dalian Pro taking on half star Habai FC, they have the worst player in FIFA. If you haven't seen us winning a Ballon d'Or with that guy, go check it out. But with Zhang Wei, the lowest rated attacker. But here we go, it's a draw. Imagine the scenes if one of these Chinese Super League teams, like the lower Chinese Super League teams, managed to win the entire world tournament. But Dali and Pro are gonna continue their progress. That's actually wild. Their team is garbage. 
garbage. And then they have just one guy that is 67 rated. That's gonna help Dali and Pro, I'm sure. Okay, heading to Turkey, Konya Spore. Heading to Turkey for the first time. Konya Spore will be heading like Southwest. Meaning they're gonna be taking on Antalya Spore. Konya Spore trying to invade and take down Antanya Spore here. Who's gonna come away? With the result, the first time in Turkey, and it is gonna be a draw. So here we go, second leg. Konya Spore hosting it this time, and it's another draw. Please don't tell me it's gonna be another draw. Third leg, here we go. And I, why couldn't you do that in the first leg? And Talia Spore get the result. Meaning Konya Spore will be sending 79 rated Pozzello across here. That is a huge dub for them. I love how I've removed so many teams that the wheel still looks just as compact as it did when we first started. Okay, we're gonna have Rosenborg. Their post-game song is still one of the coolest ever. Na, 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 na. Oh, Rosenborg. The Rosenborg are gonna be heading southwest, meaning they're gonna be taking on Mulder, Mulder FK. Two of the more well-known teams here in Norwegian football, Mulder and Rosenborg facing off here. Mulder, of course, Harland's former team, but the scoreline is going to be a win for Mulder. No singing of the song for Rosenborg today. And the goalkeeper, Hansen, will be headed to Mulder. Back to England. I feel like it's not even England technically, it's Wales, but back to the English footballing pyramid, Newport County. Newport have a real chance to get themselves some options here. They're going to be going, I think, getting an upgrade. Nope. They're going to be taking on Cardiff City. This is hilarious. Oh, the two Welsh teams going up against one another. Poor Newport County. The League Two side thought they were going to get themselves a nice little upgrade, which, let's be real, they desperately need. But now, they're going to try invading Cardiff. Granted, if they get a win here, this would be monumental, but they are really risking it all, Newport County. The scoreline, yep. They've played the hand that they've been dealt and have been eliminated in the process. It's going to be Norman heading up to Cardiff. That's going to give Cardiff a huge opportunity, though, because now not only are they going to take this area against Newport, but it gives them a serious opportunity to get some multiple upgrades all around these areas. Staying in England, it's Huddersfield's turn. Huddersfield are going to be heading east. All right, we've got to get the wheel out. All right, so it's kind of like in between these two here, so we're going to head up. Is it going to be Bradford or Leeds? I think it's going to be Bradford. Yeah, Bradford there. Yeah, just in the corner, Bradford City versus Huddersfield. I'm pretty sure we're still yet to have a team get drawn twice. Regardless, though, that means nothing compared to this game. Bradford City versus Huddersfield. Who's going to get the result here? It is going to be Bradford City punching up and eliminating a championship opponent. That is a massive result for them. So they're now gonna get themselves a 78 rated goalkeeper. That is gonna go so far. Go on Bradford City. It's like gonna be very tough for a small team like them to get a result and to get far in this competition, but Getting a 78 rated goalkeeper is going to certainly help. Again, heading to Germany, it's time for Braunschweig to get involved. Braunschweig will be heading northeast, meaning they're going to be taking on Magdeburg. Two Bundesliga two sides going head to head. Who is going to emerge from this clash? It is going to be Magdeburg defending homeland and overtaking Braunschweig in the process. So the 71 rated center half, Benkovic, is headed to Magdeburg. Yo, I was gonna say, I thought that was Philippe Benkovic. All right, heading back to France, it's Montpellier. Montpellier are heading southeast. I think that might send them into a different country because here they are right now. So southeast is around here, which means we're pulling up Spain. I believe they're gonna be versing Girona. Montpellier trying to invade Spain. This could be massive. Big game here, Girona versus Montpellier. And it is going to be Girona defending Spain and pushing themselves into France. And that means 81 rated attacking midfielder Savonier is headed to Girona. That's huge. Welcome to France, Girona. Let's go! It's my favorite team from Australia, the Western Sydney Wanderers. Oh, let's go. I've been wondering not only when an A-League club will show up, but when will one of my favorite teams show up? We're going to be heading southwest. Now, I know my map of Australia might trigger a few people, but trust me, I lived in Australia for the first 25 years of my life. I'm not I'm not stupid. What I've basically done is, because I could, because like, see, the, so many teams occupy such a small pocket of Sydney. I thought, yeah, Sydney FC, like they have the east and the south almost. So I put them this whole area here. Obviously, that's Canberra right there. 
Newcastle and Central Coast, I think, are pretty self-explanatory. Western Sydney, I decided to put us up here because MacArthur, in rivalry terms, are Southwest Sydney. So we're going to be taking on MacArthur FC. So here we go, Battle of the West. It is the Wanderers. Western Sydney Wanderers versus MacArthur FC. The cowbells are out. But let's see if we can overtake, retake the land that was once ours. Come on, Western Sydney. No! No! Daniel Arzani is going to eliminate us in the 79th minute. Are you kidding me? This one hurts the most. We've got a stacked roster. They could have had Morgan Schneiderlin, but they're going to be getting Marcelo, our center half and captain. He's going to MacArthur. Man, I'm just praying Sydney FC don't end up winning this thing though. Is that going to be Hansa Rostock? I think that is the German team. Rostock will be heading Northwest. So with the arrow out, it's like in the middle of the two, which I think is going to mean Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg versus Hansa Rostock. Wolfsburg defending home turf against Hansa Rostock. This will be huge for Rostock if they can pull this off. Will Wolfsburg survive? Yes, they do. Only just though. I mean, they literally have Cohen Castiles as their goalkeeper, who's like 84, 85 rated on this game, but they're going to get another goalkeeper. Okay, here we go. It's Celtic. Sure, a few of you guys have been waiting for this one for a while, but Celtic are going to be heading directly north. Let me do that again. Celtic are going to be heading directly south, which means they're going to claim this little area here, which is going to get them their first upgrade. It's been a hot minute since there's been any upgrades in this video. But Callum McGregor, he got a lot of upgrades in that UK imperialism video. He's back in action. 79 rated now. Ajax, the first team that have been in the video two times. Ajax. Ajax are heading north, almost northwest, which means they're going to be facing AZ Alkmaar here. Of course, Ajax do have that eighteen guy they picked up, but he's not good enough to make the starting 11. Will Ajax be able to continue their run and become the first team in this video and in this series to get two wins. The scoreline is a one-all draw. All right, Ajax at home at the Johan Cruyff Arena. The scoreline, 3-0 to AZ Alkmaar. Oh my god, they have destroyed them on the road. That is massive. The draw has determined, the wheel has determined that Geronimo Ruli will be joining AZ Alkmaar, but so will Eiting. That's the new rule. If a club picks up a player and they lose, all of the collected players go to the new team. So it's probably not going to mean much for AZ Alkmaar, but it might work big time in the future for other players in other clubs. I think that means we're heading back to France again. Bastia, here we go. And Bastia are going to be heading north. West. That's just one I wanted to address as well, because as you can see, they are an island off of France. And I said there was no water jumping allowed, but I'm going to say unless they're in the same league. So like Wellington Phoenix can jump across to Australia and the Australian teams can jump across to the Wellington Phoenix because they're all in the A-League. Bastia's in the French footballing pyramid so they can jump across water. I think that's fair. Which means I think they're going to be versing either Nîmes Olympic or Marseille. Let's get the wheel. So it's like just in here. So it's going to be, yeah, Marseille is who they're going to be versing. As you can kind of see under the screen, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's like there. So yeah, it's going to be like Marseille. Marseille at the Velodrome in South France, trying to defend homeland against Bastia, who have one of the cool logos, I've got to admit, and they're going to do just that. It's a 3-1 win for Marseille. It's not a big scalping at all, but it's going to be this guy here. 68 rated Saez Lamong heading here to Marseille. All right, we're off to Switzerland, BSC Young Boys, and they're going to be heading west. Now, they already own a large chunk of Switzerland. West for them, though, is going to be an up Grade. This is all for BSC Young Boys now. So their 76 rated right midfielder Fastnot is going up to a 78. Hello, Ryan Reynolds. Hello, Rob McElhaney. Hello, Paul Mullen. It's AFC Wrexham. I think that means Wrexham are going to be getting an upgrade. It most certainly does. Wrexham are going to take this area here. Oh, now they're touching up against Swansea. That's a big area as well. No surprises. Paul Mullen is the man that's going to be getting upgraded from a 67 to a 69. Dinamo Zagreb. Do they? No, there's more than one Croatian team in this game. Let me check. Yeah, yeah there's two in this game. Dinamo Zagreb and Hayek Split. They're going to be getting an upgrade regardless, but what direction will it be in? It's going to be to the west. So it's our third upgrade in a row. Congratulations, Dinamo Zagreb. And it's going to be Croatia's World Cup goalkeeping hero, 
Livakovic going up from an 81 to an 83. I wonder how many parts it's going to take us until we can actually make out what names are on the wheel. Regardless though, the next team up is Sarsfield. I think they're Argentinian. Sarsfield are heading southeast, which means if I'm using my same logic as I did for Boca Juniors, it means they're taking on Argentinos Juniors. Another battle for Buenos Aires. Argentinos Juniors versus Sarsfield. Who's going to survive in this Argentinian battle, it's gonna be a draw. Second leg, here we go. It's another draw, I'm sick of draws in the second legs. Leg number three, please don't be another draw for God's sakes. It's Sarsfield challenging and winning. They have imperialized Argentinos. So it's gonna be McAllister, not the Brighton one, but Kevin McAllister headed to Sarsfield. For a lot of these clubs, it's just going to be a grind getting themselves out of Buenos Aires. Back to England we go, and it's a Premier League club. Southampton, you're up. Southampton will be heading west, and I'm pretty sure that means Bournemouth. Oi, I think it actually means Swindon Town. Yeah, that's Swindon, not, not Bournemouth. That's Swindon. So here we go. It is the Premier League versus League 2. I mean, we know Southampton. They lost to Grimsby Town in the uh, FA Cup last week, so we know... They're not immune. The scoreline is a 2-1 win. Shea Adams at the death. And it's gonna be Charlie Austin. If my memory on the spot serves me correctly, he used to play for Southampton, didn't he? Maybe I'm making that up, but Charlie Austin is headed to the Saints. Oh, we're staying in England. It is a big time game. Tottenham, who are Tottenham facing? Tottenham are going to be heading Northeast. Don't need to pull the arrow out to know who they're versing. It's Tottenham against Colchester. Imagine the scenes if both Arsenal and Tottenham go out to lower league sides. Come on, Colchester. The footballing world is cheering you on. Oh, they lost 2-1. Oh, that would have been phenomenal. All right, heading back to Ireland. It's Sligo Sligo. I always get memed about how I say that, but it's the Rovers. They're going to be heading northwest, but it's going to be, or southwest, I should say, but it is an upgrade regardless, because they're literally all on their own. So we're going to give them this area here. Going to be the big fella, the center half. Pinaka, Pinaka, going up from 63 to 65. Regensburg, again, I believe they are German. Regensburg heading west. And that, is mean they, that means they're going to be taking on FC Ingolstadt. This could be a good game. It's crazy how much Ingolstadt have fallen, if I'm being totally honest. They were a Bundesliga club. They had Matt Lecky. Like, they are now a third division side. And Regensburg are the favorites in this game. The scoreline is going to be a two-all draw. They've got Sarpreet Singh. The Kiwi midfielder Sarpreet Singh in there for Regensburg. But the scoreline here against Ingolstadt is Ingolstadt getting the upset on the road and keeping their dreams alive. Regensburg helping them out a lot here, giving them a 71 rated center defensive midfielder. Go on, Ingolstadt. They've got, a, they've got a really cool logo, I'm not gonna lie. That's one of my favorite logos. Heading back to Belgium, Circle Bruges. Circle Bruges are going to be heading north east, which I believe means, oh, wait, are they versing Ghent or are they versing Club Bruges? I mean, if we're going from the logo, I think it means they're versing Bruges by the skin of their teeth. But if we're going from the center of like the actual landmass, then it's obviously Ghent. But if I'm being, if I'm being like consistent, I've been going from the logo with a lot of teams. So it's going to be Club Bruges. It's the battle of Bruges. Who is going to win? Is Brussels Bruges? I don't know, my Belgian geography is dreadful. But who is going to be the winner in this matchup? It is going to be Club Bruges in the 54th minute. They had a chance to equalize in the 83rd and missed. 73 rated Holtich is headed to Club Bruges. Werder Bremen, Werder Bremen, here we go. Werder Bremen is heading southeast. And just like in our Bundesliga imperialism video, they're gonna be versing Wolfsburg. At least this time they weren't Surrounded just by Wolfsburg. So it's an all Bundesliga affair. No surprise to see Wolfsburg not rocking their goalkeeper. They got the 71 rated guy from Hansa Rostock or wherever it was. But it's going to be Werder Bremen. Werder Bremen are going to come away with the win. Wow. Okay. I was not expecting that. So it's a two for one pickup here for Werder Bremen. They're going to be getting Cohen Castiles, who's going to go lovely for their side, but they're also going to be getting the Colgate guy, like the four string goalkeeper who they picked up as well. They've gone from having just this little area to themselves to now a large chunk of Germany. Heading back to Argentina, it is River Plate. Another Buenos Aires derby coming up. This time they're going to be heading in this direction. So they're going to be taking on La Plata. Estudiantes... La Plata versus River Plate here. Another Buenos Aires derby. 
Who's gonna emerge victorious in this one? It's a, that's a crazy good game, three all. All right, second leg here. River Plate versus Estudiantes. The winner in the second leg is going to be another draw. All right, here we go. Third leg. Please don't be another draw. Surely not. Oh, it's a stu I was not expecting that. I thought River Plate were gonna win them. To be fair, I didn't expect it to go to three legs. I thought River Plate were gonna win. Estudiantes have caused a major upset. And it's gonna be Fernandez, the center midfielder, who is headed here to Estudiantes. That is, again, very unexpected. This team is very well-rounded from River Plate. Huge shame they're out already. Columbus Crew. Oh shit, are we gonna have a hell is real derby? No, we're not. I think it's gonna mean that they're gonna have Wisconsin. No, Indiana, what am I talking about? The Columbus crew are gonna get themselves an upgrade and are gonna take Indiana. That's a dangerous update. The upgrade there for the Columbus crew. Lucas Zellerayan is gonna get himself up to an 81. Osasuna in the Spanish league. I'm pretty sure if they get north here, they get, they're gonna find themselves heading up, but they're not, they're gonna have Southwest, which is gonna see Osasuna getting an upgrade here. Fair play to them. They do kind of have a path if they play their cards right, where they can just go all the way down they could find themselves down in like Portugal and like not have a single game. It's gonna be their striker, Avia, heading up from an 80 to an 82. I'm ready for a big game. I'm ready to watch a game. I'm, reckon I'm ready for a mouth-watering matchup here. Are we gonna get that? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> FC Lorient are heading south, kind of southeast. They're gonna be versing Stard. Love Aloy. It's the battle of orange and black. I don't know if that's what they actually call it. That's what I'm just phrasing it now though. It's time for the game that you have all been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. The battle of orange and black. Star Love Aloy versus FC Lorient. Who is going to emerge as winners? It is FC Lorient. No real surprises there. I actually don't know if this like helps Lorient at all. I don't know how good their team is, but they're gonna get a 69 rated midfielder. The thing that I'm thinking, or at least the way I'm going about thinking about it is some of these bigger clubs, like these smaller players not might not really affect them, but I think down the line, like if they end up coming up against a smaller team and they shock them, and this smaller team goes and gets a bunch of like 60, 70 rated players as upgrades, that could change their whole trajectory. We've got Hibs, we're heading to Edinburgh. We've got Hibs, Hibernian, and here we go. Hibs are heading west. Southwest to be exact, and if we're being legit, like they're gonna, they're gonna just touch Livingston here, so they're gonna be versing Livingston. This could be a big game. Livingston, of course, do have their upgrade Rated striker Anderson, 66 to a 68. What can Hibbs do here? The scoreline is going to be a 2-0 win there for Hibbs, meaning Anderson will be going to the green side of Edinburgh. A lot of green about to come here into Hibbs' favor. The big thing is as well, if Hibbs end up versing Hearts, the winner of that game will unlock two more plus two upgrades. So that could be a game changer. We haven't had any of the, like, those multi upgrades yet, have we? Because nobody's really been able to have multiple attempts. I cannot wait to start like t giving more clubs more areas. Like Helsinki is really the only team that's been able to do that so far in this video. St. Pat's, they're back and they're going to be heading north. So the first team in this imperialism video, they're going to be heading north and taking on Shamrock Rovers. That Barrett fellow that's St. Pat's picked up on the first win of the video is into their back line, but here we go. Shamrock Rovers versus St. Pat's. Who's gonna stay alive in the Republic of Ireland? <laughs> Again, we'll have to wait and find out. Second leg, lads. Here we go. St. Pat's versus Shamrock Rovers, and it's another draw. I swear when if we have one draw in the first leg, the second leg's automatically a draw as well. Third leg coming up. Do either of these sides want to stay alive or do they just both want to go? Shamrock Rovers are going to stay alive. They're going to take down St. Pat's. Shamrock Rovers do have themselves a pretty decent side, but they're also going to get Mulraney to add to it, and they're also going to get the initial transfer, Barrett. Goodbye to the first winner in this imperialism challenge. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Back, Estudiantes. They've already taken down part of Buenos Aires. They're gonna have to take down more. They're gonna be taking on racing. Estudiantes, of course, have Fernandez, who they added from River Plate. Can they stay alive here against Racing Club? Another Buenos Aires battle and another bloody draw. Come on, don't make it go to a third leg. I want to know here and now. I want to know here and now. It's going to be Estudiantes staying alive. They continue to get stronger and stronger, Estudiantes, adding a 79 rated goalkeeper in Arias to their side. Are they going to prove themselves to be the real power brokers here in Buenos Aires? So we're going to Canada again. It is Montreal. Montreal 
Montreal going to be moving down into America or are they going to claim more land in Canada? They're going to be claiming more land in Canada. They're going to get themselves all of this land here. Meaning Victor Wanyama. I forgot he played for Montreal. Victor Wanyama goes up to a 77. CD Lugo, I believe they're Spanish. CD Lugo will be heading northeast. No, they will not be because that's them there. And then that's the top. That's where they are on the map. So they can't go on the ocean. They can go west though, which means they're going to get themselves an upgrade, which means their goalkeeper, Whaley, is going to go from a 72 to a 74. Espanol, we're staying in Spain. They're heading north, which means they're versing Barcelona. Let's go. Barcelona's involved. We're about to see whether Espanol can pull off a massive upset here. If they do, I think they get the Lewandowski on their hands. That could be massive. The scoreline in a Catalonian derby is a 2-0 win though for Barcelona. Nice little addition though. Could be a handy bench prospect here for Barcelona since it's Dada, Sergi Dada heading to the Camp Nou. Oh, we're heading back to Argentina. The, we've had two of Messi's former clubs back to back. Noel's old boys are heading northeast. And of course, they are not in Buenos Aires. They're just north, but they're going to be getting themselves an upgrade. Fair play. It's a three-way tie for the highest rated player. And the game has dotted Noel's old boys by choosing, or the wheel has dotted Noel's old boys by choosing the left back to get the upgrade. Peterborough, we're heading back to England. Peterborough will be heading northwest, which means they're going to be versing Leicester City. This could be fun. The 86 rated, James Madison up for grabs. Peterborough also got that Hoskins guy they got from Northampton who fits perfectly into their starting 11. This could be a massive result, but it's not going to be. Leicester City get the win. And I bet they're absolutely thrilled to be getting Clark Harris and Hoskins. Spezia, I think this is gonna be, yeah, the first time we head to Italy in this entire video. And Spezia will be heading northwest, meaning they're gonna be heading up to Turin and taking on Torino. An all Serie A matchup here. Torino versus Spezia, who is going to be on top? It is going to be Torino. And Torino are gonna be getting the goalkeeper, Dragowski. AS Monaco, okay, we're starting to get some bigger teams coming out now. AS Monaco are heading west, kind of southwest. Oh, this game's gonna be big. It's Marseille versus Monaco. I need to watch this one. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is a massive clash in French football. The Stard Velodrome is up for grabs. Who's gonna stay alive and who's gonna be imperialized? Oh, what a tackle from Fofana. Shoot it, mate. Fofana. That is all you, man. Making the huge tackle and a huge finish to give Monaco the lead. Sanchez, it's one all. Under makes it one all. Some silky skills on display there. Genduzzi, it's 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one Marseille, they've brought it from behind. Oh, it's good footy, that. Golovin, going to Ben Yedda. Vasim Ben Yedda driving through. Ben Yedda makes it 2 all. There is no defense in this game. There we go, lads. It's a 2 all draw. We're off the penalties. Penalties to see who's going to make it out of this league and clash. That is a terrible start there for Marseille. And Veritao, he goes for the dink down the middle. Class penalty, Ben Yedda. Unda. Already got a goal to his name. It's 2-0 potentially here to Monaco. Two misses back to back and two class penalties from Monaco. This is going to be really tough for Marseille to get out of. They get themselves a goal though. Fofana, the man that scored the first goal, is going to shoot it straight down the middle. Lopez, huge penalty. Alexi Sanchez, that's how you pull off a dink. This is huge. Diada versus Lopez. Diada versus Lopez sends him the wrong way. If this is saved by Nubel, Monaco will advance. It's Rongier. I reckon he's going to miss this. No, he's not. Don't take my word. So here it is. Kamara. If he scores this one, then it is Monaco who are through. What are you doing? What are you doing? It is sudden death. Oh, the keeper goes way too early. So many mistakes in this shootout. And now the pressure is on AS Monaco. They need to score. Golovin versus Paul Lopez. Oh, we we'll continue going. Beardy versus New Bell. Here we go. Vanderson versus Lopez to stay alive. He does. This shootout's never going to end, is it? Gigo against New Bell sends him the wrong way. Monaco have been perfect as of late. 
Enrique, though, versus Paul Lopez dinks it down the middle. That is absolutely disgraceful. Monaco have bottled it and Marseille move on. What a game, ladies and gentlemen. And it is going to be Ben Yedda headed to Monaco. Marseille, I should say. Marseille might not have claimed much land from that win, but that is a huge scalping. Leverkusen, we're getting big club after big club after big club now. By Leverkusen, what direction will they be heading? They'll be heading north. Oh, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be Borussia Dortmund by the skin of their teeth. Also, I should clarify, I'm sure you guys can see a grayed out logo and a full logo. That's because there's two Borussia Dortmund teams in the game. The full one is the colored in one and the grayed out one is Borussia Dortmund's reserve team that are in the third division. Dortmund versus Leverkusen here at the Signal Aduna Park. A lot on the line right now. The scoreline is a draw. I would almost put my life savings on this second leg being a draw. Why don't you go and be like five nil to somebody? It's a four two win for Borussia Dortmund. They advance and Leverkusen are going to give Diaby to Borussia Dortmund. Dortmund getting stronger and stronger. We're staying in Germany, Saarbrückener. Which direction? Are they heading? They are heading west. Also, I know when I go west, I'm pointing west on my screen, but my camera is reversed. So when I say west, you guys are like, why, the, why is he pointing east? He's going west, and now I'm pointing east. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. They are going to be moving into another country, are they? Okay, so that's the top of Belgium. No, what's number one? One is Luxembourg. Oh, shit, lads. Luxembourg is now about to be controlled. Saarbrück, and I need to paint around this number one, but Luxembourg is officially Saarbrücken territory, which is also going to mean a plus two upgrade for their goalkeeper and captain, Bats. He goes up to a 72. All right, headed back to Belgium, Royal Antwerp. And Royal Antwerp will be heading northeast, which means they're going to find themselves pushing up into the Netherlands, which I believe means they're going to be versing the this team here, RKC Walwick. Royal Antwerp trying to invade Dutch territory. Will they be successful or will it go the other way? They will be successful. Janssen invades the Netherlands and is going to imperialize Walwick in the 86th minute. And in the process is going to make this striker a part of their club. Fair play, Royal Antwerp. You've got yourselves up here. Whoa. How far up the Netherlands will they get themselves? Barcelona! Shit, that's a big one. FC Barcelona. Here we go. Barcelona are going to be heading north. East, which I think, yeah, that's going to be Girona. This is huge because not only will Barcelona get all the Catalans region if they win this, I'm pretty sure they also get France, don't they? Because Girona beat Montpellier. This could be massive. This is a game changer potentially. And Barcelona have done it in the 89th minute. They claim the Catalans region and are also going to push into France. Again, not that they really need them, but Barcelona are going to get their hands on Montpellier's seven year, and they're also going to get Sankov, the Ukrainian right midfielder. There it is. They take that section there, getting rid of Girona, but they're also going to come in here and take Girona's slice of France. Officially Barcelona territory. Aston Villa, here we go. First time in the Midlands in today's video. Aston Villa are going to be heading North, south, sorry, southwest. Southwest for Aston Villa is only just by this little corner here. Going to be Birmingham City. Nothing like a Midlands derby to get the juices flowing here. Birmingham City defending against Aston Villa who are trying to imperialize them. And it is going to be Aston Villa successful in their mission. Not too big of a win here for Aston Villa though. They're going to get John Ruddy. Valladolid, we're headed back to Spain. Valladolid are going to be heading south west, meaning they're going to get themselves an upgrade, meaning their 78 rated left midfielder Machis is headed up to an 80. Lugano, that's Switzerland. If they go south, I'm pretty sure they push into Italy. They're not going to though. They're going to get themselves an upgrade, are they? Yeah, they're going to get this area here. Fair play, Lugano. Fair play. You avoid Sion. 76 rated Stefan goes up to a 78. Leicester City again. They're getting themselves involved. Leicester City will be heading directly north. You can't get much more north or south than that. My God, south. So directly south of their logo is going to be Luton Town. Imagine the scenes if the 86 rated James Madison ends up at Luton Town. That would be, 
That'd be pretty funny, I'm not gonna lie. The score line, oh, it almost does, but it's a 2-1 win for Leicester. Meaning that the 75 rated Marvelous Nakamba is back in the Premier League with Leicester City. Lanús, they're from Argentina, I believe. Lanús are gonna be heading basically north, which means they're gonna be facing Newell's old boys. Trying to be the first club to break out of Buenos Aires. Of course, Newell's have that 75 rated left back, Vangioni. Are they gonna hold on to him or will he be a Lanús player? by the end of this game. De La Vega plays for them. And De La Vega, I think, will be the one joining Newell's. Oh, he's not. De La Vega's the second highest rated player. That's a sick mullet, new headshot. It's gonna be the center half, Lima, Christian Lima, heading to Newell's old boys. Back to Spain again, Burgos CF. Burgos are going to be heading north, southwest, which is gonna see them going head to head with the team that's already got an upgrade, Valladolid. Will the 80 rated Matisse make an impact given his upgrade or can Burgos pull off a massive upset here the score line is a 2-1 win McKees does get the winning goal it's not going to make much of an impact regardless but it is going to be the goalkeeper Caro headed to Valladolid Norwich hello Norwich are heading south I'm pretty sure from memory I think that means Ipswich yeah that means Ipswich Norwich versus Ipswich Town Lasty versus Jackmate both of these clubs having their first appearances in this imperialism global imperialism video who is going to be sticking around Ipswich or Norwich City, it is going to be Norwich City. I'm sorry, Lasty. I wanted your boys to pull off an upset. Hopefully your midfielder Morsi can hang around in spirit. He's off to Norwich City. Ah, BSC Young Boys, you return. Are they gonna start making their move into another nation? They're gonna be heading east. All right, if we're going from the logo then, actually I need to get the ruler out. Directly east. Oh my God, is that gonna get them? That's gonna, you lucky buggers. That is gonna get them an upgrade. I thought for all money they'd be taking on FC Luzerne. So Fastnat is now up to an 80. Napoli, we've got a big dog in the fight now. Napoli heading to Naples, but where are Napoli heading? They're heading north, northeast sort of. Well done, Napoli. Welcome as a gift for you joining the fight. You get yourself an upgrade. That's dangerous. That is really dangerous. Osiman, the Nigerian striker, goes up to 86. He's gonna be a prized possession. Everybody's gonna wanna take down Napoli to get him. Nuremberg, we're headed back to Germany and they're gonna be heading Northwest, meaning they're gonna be facing Augsburg. Interesting. Both these teams in an interesting position where they're trying to basically keep heading North to get themselves as far away from Bayern Munich as possible, or at least build themselves up to be better than by Munich as close as they can get but this is an interesting game Augsburg or Nuremberg who's surviving it is going to be Augsburg Demirovic with an 87th minute winner and that's going to send Schindler the center half to Augsburg I mean yeah Augsburg got to be happy they survived but they've now brought themselves into the belly of the beast where they share a border with Bayern Munich is Meppen German or Austrian let's have a look I think they're German. Yeah, they're German. All right, where are they going to be heading? SV Meppen, heading basically north. So it's going to be a lower league clash against Oldenburg. Third division team versus third division team. One of these teams will be heading home. One of them will be taking over their territory and continuing in the imperialism journey. And it is going to be Meppen. I'm sure that's the game all of you guys at home are watching and waiting, waiting desperately for. But lads, we're pretty deep into the video right now, which means you're obviously enjoying it. If you are and you aren't already subscribed, make sure you scorpion kick that subscribe button down below on the push towards 500,000 subscribers. There we go, the 60, is that Mark Stendara? Yeah, I swear I've used that guy in career mode before, or at least heard of him. Regardless though, he's gonna be heading to Meppen. Rail Oviedo, welcome back. They're gonna be heading exactly west, trying to gain a huge chunk of land here as they face CD. Lugo. Which team is going to stay alive? Oviedo with their 76 rated addition and Izquierdos in the back line there. The score line for Spain is another win for Real Oviedo. And they're going to get themselves another helpful piece to the squad here as Torres is going to join them. Headed back to Romania, it's Cluj. CFR Cluj, what direction are you going to be heading? You're going to be heading west. You're going to be heading west. <laughs> and that is going to be an upgrade there for CFR Cluj. They're getting an upgrade to the defensive midfield role. A J Boateng up from a 71 to a 73. We're really getting a lot of the random countries now. We're heading to Sweden, Dergafors IF. And Dergafors will be heading northwest, meaning they're going to get an upgrade. A lot of these random clubs giving themselves a fighter's chance by getting upgrades. 
upgrades. It's going to be their winger, the club sponsored by McDonald's and about 400 other clubs. All of a sudden, I feel hungry, but Campos is going up to a 67. Come on, lads. I want a big team. CS Mioveni is not a big team, for God's sakes. They're going to be heading west. And it's another Romanian side getting themselves an upgrade. Romania really starting to get involved in the upgrade space. It will be their attacking midfielder, Ben Chaib, going from a 67 to a 69. Yeah, they need all the upgrades they can get. RB Salzburg. We're heading to a somewhat bigger club now in Austria. And they're going to be heading northeast, which means they have got a date now with Gun Tomatic. Gun Tomatic. Rumor has it that's Tim Amatic's less successful younger brother. If you know, you know. Turns out their club name's actually SV Reed, not Gun Tomatic. But anywho, let's see if SV Reed can make me eat my own words and can force an upset here in Austrian football. No, they can't. It's a win for Salzburg. Not a crazy upgrade, but it could help them down the line. They're getting a 70 rated keeper. Adelaide United. Okay, we're back in the A-League. Adelaide United are gonna be heading west. So it's gonna be in Perth glory. Been a while between drinks for the A-League teams, but yeah, Adelaide United take, although could we make the argument because it's like that they get the Northern Territory? Let's get the wheel out, get the arrow out. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right. I think, oh, I think I'm right. Adelaide United are going to get the Northern Territory. No surprises. Craig Goodwin, one of Australia's heroes at the World Cup, is going to be the man getting the upgrade up from a 75 to a 77. Headed back to Spain, Ibar involved. Are they going to be heading north or are they going to be staying? They're going to be going north. I think they just miss out on getting up into the French Republic, into France, because I think that's the dip there and they're around there. So they're going to be heading west, meaning it's going to be Ibar versus Athens. Athletic Club Bilbao. Can the second division, the Liga Sedunda, Sedunda, I can't talk, man. Liga Sedunda side cause an upset against Bilbao. Here we go. The game is going to be a 1-0 win for Bilbao. It's not going to be a game changer, though, for Bilbao. I'll be ahead to them. Okay, we're off to Poland. Have we been to Poland yet? Wisleplok will be heading southeast. They're going to be taking on Radomiak Radom. Absolute powerhouse game. It's the first Polish game of the day, but only one team will be progressing. And that team is going to be Radomiak Radom. Wisleplok fucked around and found out. I don't know if this is a good upgrade or what. I don't know the state of this other team team, but it's going to be Wolski heading to Radom. Shandong Taishan, I believe it's Chinese league, I assume. They're going to be heading south, which is going to get them an upgrade. They could have been versing Hainam, but they're going to be getting an upgrade. Oh shit, look who their, look who their highest rated player is. It's Marouane Fellaini. Marouan Fellaini. He's going up to a 77. Nah, that's just made my day seeing this beautiful man's face. Bristol City. It's been a while since we've had to, we've been in England. Bristol City, what direction are you heading? You are heading north. So it's going to be a Bristol derby here. Bristol City taking on Bristol Rovers. Bristol City were one of the surprise teams in our UK imperialism video. Are they going to continue on the same trajectory or... Yes, they will. I was going to say, or oh, will Bristol Rovers get one over them? They don't. Bristol City win. And they're going to make the striker Collins one of their own. Collins got a few upgrades in the uh, UK one. So see what he can do this time around. FC Copenhagen. Nice to see ya. First time seeing them in this series. And they're going to be heading southeast. No, they're not. They're going to be heading southwest. No, north. Northwest. So they're going to be taking on Norseland. This would be a massive scalp for Norseland if they're able to take out Copenhagen. Here we go. The scoreline. It is a 1-0 win. A red card in the second minute there for Vavro. And Emiliano causes a huge upset here in Danish football. FC Copenhagen eliminated. And that's going to see Klaassen headed off there. That is a massive scalping. I did not expect FC Copenhagen to be eliminated this early on in their time. But lads, with that scalping, there is now 600 teams remaining. This is how the world map is currently looking, but something tells me it's going to look a lot different at the end of it, at part two. But lads, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe down below. I will see you for part number two in a couple days time.